पीपल यू हैव मेट इन योर लाइव हु आर बोथ इंटेलिजेंट इंटेलिजेंट एज पर यू एन इंटेलिजेंट पर्सन दैट यू डिसक इट कुड बी एनी वन इट कुड बी योर बॉस बॉसेस आर ऑलवेज इंटेलिजेंट मैनी पीपल डिसक दैम एंड इट कुड बी योर कॉलीग इट कुड बी योर एनी वन एंड इन दिस बॉक्स आई वुड लाइक यू टू इमेजिन एन इंटेलिजेंट पर्सन हुम यू लाइक्ड अगेन इट कुड बी एनी वन इट कुड बी योर फ्रेंड योर स्पाउज और समन यू मेट एंड आई वुड लाइक यू टू स्पेंड अ फ्यू मोमेंट्स थिंकिंग अबाउट वाई दिस इज द केस दे वर बोथ इंटेलिजेंट बट यू लाइक्ड वन पर्सन एंड यू डिसलाइक्ड वन पर्सन वॉट वर दोज थिंग्स बिकॉज ऑफ विच यू पुट दैट पर्सन इन दैट बॉक्स एंड दिस पर्सन इन दिस बॉक्स एज यू थिंक अबाउट दिस आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू कॉक बुक्स नो कॉक बुक्स इज एन एडेप्टिव ई लर्निंग कंपनी दैट मेक्स ऑनलाइन कोर्सेज नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव गॉन थ्रू ऑनलाइन कोर्सेज लाइक यूडिवर्सिटी कोर्सेरा विच इज नथिंग बट अ सीक्वेंस ऑफ पेजेस वॉट कॉक बुक्स डज इज इट एनालाइजेज हाउ ईच स्टूडेंट इज लर्निंग एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट कस्टमाइजेज द कोर्स फॉर ईच स्टूडेंट सो दैट एवरी स्टूडेंट बिकम सक्सेसफुल दिस इज डन यूजिंग मशीन लर्निंग टू एनालाइज हाउ द स्टूडेंट्स लर्न एंड देन रेकमेंडिंग द राइट एक्टिविटीज फॉर दैट स्टूडेंट टू लर्न सो इफ सम ऑफ यू हु इज अ सीनियर पर्सन and some of you who is a junior person both take on the same course both are not given the same activities to do so that is about cog books and this is what happened at cog books we built an ai based product and we thought okay amazon uses ai youtube uses ai to recommend uh, videos to people it works for them amazon uses ai to recommend products to people it works for them so what we should do we should use ai to recommend learning activities to students and it will work for them it didn't work nobody liked our product so when we had a product which shows learning activities and some recommended more learning activities for you because this worked for people like you nobody visited them and it didn't really help them succeed so even though those recommendations were there they were not having any impact and we didn't get get any positive feedback and why was this happening for two reasons one is it felt mechanical i'm going through a, a learner is going through a course and we are just saying okay these are the recommendations for you it works for things like youtube where the content their attention is on the content and their emotional needs are different but it doesn't work for an online learning environment the second part was it lacked empathy so the learners were going through and we were showing recommendations but there was nothing we were doing to handle their emotions that means it lacked empathy and the reason that happened is because we used the old design process now i'm assuming most of you guys are designers so i want to go into what personas are but we defined personas personae then we defined some common scenarios that these personae go through and then we designed an interface that works for most of these scenarios that's the usual design process right so we followed it for this also but then it did not work and then we got into finding out why it did not work and it turns out that people think of products as people and this is a fundamental shift this was a fundamental shift for us and an extension of that is intelligent products are thought of as intelligent people and not just products with some ai based component in them so how do we make sure that we design our product that is perceived as an intelligent person right not just as an as a product with some recommendations in it and we just saw in the previous slide where we imagined people that just because someone in, is intelligent doesn't mean they are likable because of various reasons so i'm coming back to this slide where you had an intelligent person you disliked and an intelligent person you liked the reasons why you disliked that person and the reasons why you like that person does does anyone want to share any one reason you won't have to reveal the person so it's not invading your privacy anyone wants to share why they disliked an intelligent person in their lives so yeah so probably dislike will be with confrontations you know too many to and fro discussions and liking is mutually you know agreement on the you know ideas and you know yeah so um an intelligent person um i dislike uh, although dislike is a strong word uh, but i usually sort of you know did not get along very well uh, was someone who uh, would always try to force 
his way or like is always uh, of the uh, you know notion that either it's my way or um, you know the highway yes. and um, an intelligent person that i liked is someone who is very open who is um, very transparent and who is at least giving you a patient hearing trying to understand your perspective and comes to a conversation without a prejudice or a bias thank you both fantastic answers thanks a lot these are exactly the kind of insights that we got when we studied intelligent likable people and and intelligent people whom we dislike so like what these members shared with us the intelligent people whom we like try to understand us and make their intelligence work for us and the intelligent people whom we dislike are intelligent by themselves but they don't do any effort to make their intelligent work for us yeah, that is one of the reasons and in some cases in which they shared they even make them work against us so it turns into a confrontation so how do we make sure that since our product is being treated as a person it is treated like this person it's perceived like this person and not that person or anywhere in between and we got proof for this in sci-fi films where ai is almost always shown as a person and in this specific film ex machina anyone seen ex machina okay is the same ai person and we have shown how that person can be likable at some point and evil at another point so all these things kind of came together and we thought what is the process that we should use to make our product like a likable person there were two approaches the first approach is we can make the product uh, having universally likable traits like we can make it cute have some cute drawings and everyone likes cute things but th that only works for certain kinds of products and not all kinds of products and uh, yeah if it's a story we can make it an underdog and we can make him innocent attributes so this was not the path that we wanted to take the other path is that we can have them give them a positive personality a personality that goes with the product so if it's an online learning environment the users don't expect it to be cute what do they expect it to be what kind of personality do they expect in that environment we thought to find out and second one is about how do we understand the user's situations and give empathy to the artificial intelligence so that it treats each situation with empathy so we defined a user persona everyone knows personas and here i'm only showing the aspects of the persona who are uh, that are relevant for this talk so our persona was a student in us it's a us based uh, company and he is a 19 year old college student he is studying biology and he is a low academic performer and he is at the risk of dropping out of college so what do we know from this that uh, we should treat him with care and if in an online learning environment if we treat this guy and say some strong words to him it's likely that he is going to drop out of college and fail in his career the next part was defining a brand personality or rather a product personality so we are all familiar with user persona but the same process can be applied to a product also that was the new thing here now how do we define this now there are already books like nicely said and designing for the digital age that talk about how we define a personality but both those books are talking for different reason nicely said is talking for voice and tone design for digital age is talking about visuals now how can we extend that process of finding a product persona to the interactions as well so for that we held meetings with the ceo the founders of the company and asked them if this product if this environment was a person what kind of a person do you think it would be would it be a funny person would it be a friendly person would it be someone who helps you would it be someone who is interested in taking you further and we collected all these answers and just like how we build a user persona from user research we built a product persona from founders research so now let's look at how can the ai with this product persona understand jacob situation jacob is the user and give recommendations with empathy so 
Like I said, this was the old method where we define personae, we define scenarios, and we design an interface that works for all of them. This is the new method. We define the brand persona or the product persona. We define the user persona. That we do once. And then for every situation that the user faces in his experience, we, we understand what are the emotions that are experienced by that user. And then we imagine a response from the brand persona to the user persona, and we translate that response into a user interface. Okay, so imagine a situation where Jacob, the user, is answering an exam, or it may not be a final exam of the year, some test, and his teacher is there, and he fail, he's not able to write that exam. What would the brand persona, who is a friendly person, do in that situation? And how can we translate that action, empathetic action, into a user interface was the thing we needed to do for each. So let's look at an example, just what I told you. Jacob answered an assessment. He needs to complete the current module by the end of this week, so the time is limited. And he has, if he doesn't do that, he does not pass in the semester. And he fails that exam. Now in this situation, what are the feelings, what are the emotions that Jacob is experiencing? One is the experience of stress. He's feeling bad that he couldn't pass the test. First only he's a low academic performer, then he passed and failed a test. Then he's feeling insecure about uh, his studies, like most people who are bad at studies do. I, I failed a test, probably I'm not good at biology, I should quit biology altogether. That's the other emotion. And then the next emotion is not knowing what to do next. So I failed in uh, this test, now what do I do? And imagine he's going through these emotions and we just show him recommendations for you. That's really unempathetic, right? So uh, what would uh, David, uh, Dave, our product persona do in this case? He will take this situation coolly. He'll say, if he were a person interacting with another person, he will say, okay, you didn't get the test right, but it's no big deal. You can learn and you can come back and answer it. And then he will advise him what to study so that you can answer this test well and do well in general. So it seems obvious when it's a human to human interaction, but we miss out on these things if we design for a common scenario where all interactions are clubbed together in one or two scenarios. So what we realized that every situation like this has to be listed out in a table. We made a huge Excel sheet or on paper first. We had to list down all the emotions that the user will likely feel at this point and imagine the response of our product persona to those emotions. And then how do we translate this into a UI? That's a craft that we are still coming up with. So the first one, how, how does the user know that the product is taking it coolly, Dave is taking it coolly? Uh, one sentence. Then how do we encourage him to study more? Again, another few, uh, some, some UI element that encourages Jacob to study more. And then what does, what should Jacob do next? That is the next steps for him shown in the UI. So once we show these elements in the UI, that was nothing but a translation of Dave's empathetic response. So I'll show you an example of the UI. This was a question, again, sorry for the American context, is ab it's about uh, civil war in USA. And the question is about what was the primary goal following the civil war, and he was given options. And Jacob did not know the answer to this question, and he answered, he gave a wrong answer. It's a typical e-learning program. Now, you see here, we are not converting the page with all red things. You got it wrong, and that was a wrong answer. We are just giving a sentence that said, looks like you didn't get that right, but don't worry, you can answer this again after going through the recommended items. And the recommended items are sequenced in a way that the next item for them is highlighted. And not only that, it's presented in a magazine-like layout where they are told about what they should read next and why they should read it. They should read it because he appeared to need more help with the post-Civil War goals of Abraham Lincoln. This is what you don't know, so you read this and you come back. So this was one page. We did this for every single situation, every single interaction, and what ended, out, ended up is and use a user experience that is nothing but a translation of a product personality. 
which was empathetic in nature. And again, this was the process that we used. Since every, every interaction, every situation was based on an imagined response of the product persona, the AI-based product became human. And after this redesign, the product became phenomenally successful for its target market. The user started giving positive feedback. You can check out the positive feedback on our website, pogbooks.com, and how it has helped transform the lives of people. But behind all that is this process. Design the persona and the uh, brand once, and for every situation, treat the situation with empathy. Thanks a lot. So if, I would like to take up questions from any of you. If there are. We have time for one question, because so post that, we can take it offline. Yeah, Thank thanks. You. So just uh, I wanted to ask one thing, you know, uh, while going through this process, you, know, you considered uh, how it, uh, the interaction would be on uh, chats, on voice, anything that you considered that, you know, while cons you know, talking to these uh, guys, you know, personas, you know, when it will be actually, it will be actually implemented, it will be a voice-based, voice-based, or something chat-based, so you can get the actual emotions, right? So, uh, the product that we were building was not a chatbot. If it were a chatbot, this would have the output would have been sentences. But since the product, that's a limitation set by the industry and other things that are out of the hands of the user experience design. Since the product was a user interface, we limited our scope to what are the elements that we can play with within that user interface, like images, text, blocks of content, etc. And we translated only those elements into this. So voice and tone is a part of it, but only in form of uh, written sentences. Yes, yes, yes. So those sentences, each of those sentences were um, made for that situation to address the emotions that the person was feeling for that. Situation.